you might be doing lymphatic drainage wrong and you don't even know it. Part of the problem is there are a ton of people out there now teaching lymphatic drainage with good intention. Because here's the thing, I think there needs to be more attention brought to the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is so super important, but although they have good intention, they don't fully understand the physiology. So they're not 100% teaching it correctly. And when it's not done properly or with the right order or direction, or pressure, it really means your results are gonna suffer. And the last thing I want is for you to put effort in and not get good results. So let's talk about a few of the things, the most common problems when doing lymphatic drainage and some of the things that I see being taught that aren't exactly correct. That way you'll know exactly what to do so you can get the best results possible. First things first, when we're doing lymphatic drainage, why it's important is because our lymphatic system doesn't have a pump. It's not like our circulation or our circulatory system. Our circulatory system has our heart right? And our heart pumps our blood everywhere. It pumps it all the way to our fingertips, into our brain, down to our toes, and every tissue, gland, and organ in our body. The lymphatic system then takes that waste fluid from cellular metabolism, from every tissue, gland, organ, fingertips, brain, toes, and brings it back and returns it to the circulatory system. So it's this beautiful loop. It's amazing what our body does. But where it returns it to the circulatory system, so where it returns it, is back above our clavicles, which is what I call termini. Termini means end. There's a lot of people that use termini. So right above our clavicles is the termini. Now what I see happening is a lot of people are not always starting at the termini. And the problem with that is a lot of people have congestion here. If you were puffy above your clavicles or even below, that could mean that you have lymphatic fluid sitting there. And the longer lymphatic fluid sits, it's gonna drive inflammation, right? So fluid, especially waste fluid, that is holding onto toxins and bacteria and viruses and waste products, it can cause further breakdown and bigger problems. So always starting at the termini is extremely important. I'm even gonna go to say starting and finishing with the termini because you just wanna make sure that this area is free and clear. This area has the lowest pressure of any part of your body for lymphatic fluid. And fluid always flows from high pressure to low pressure. The problem is if we have congestion at our clavicles, that is no longer gonna be low pressure, it's gonna be high pressure, which means fluid's not gonna flow. And if this is where all the lymphatic fluid drains to to go back to our heart, it means our lymphatic fluid's not gonna be draining. Okay, so always start and finish above your clavicle. Gotta make sure that this remains low pressure in order for your lymphatic fluids to drain. The next thing that I see happening quite often is the order in which we do things. So physiology really should be dictating how we do physical therapies. And lymphatic drainage can be, most often, a very physical therapy meaning we're physically doing something in order to get a certain result. Now, a lot of times I teach with our hands. Why? Because too much pressure is a problem. And the moment I give somebody a tool like a dry brush or a gua sha tool, or even just one of those like wooden mallets or anything like that, the amount of pressure they use goes way up. So making sure that the pressure being used is very minimal. The amount of pressure is the amount of pressure you would put on your eyeballs before you see any type of stars kaleidoscope, anything like that. It's very gentle. So always go and check your pressure. If you're pushing too hard, what can happen is your lymphatic vessels can ultimately like spasm. It's probably the best way that I can describe it. And when it spasms, it's not gonna drain. And that defeats the purpose of doing lymphatic drainage, right? So making sure your pressure is appropriate. The next thing is doing the order. So knowing where fluid, and order and direction really do go hand in hand. Knowing where the fluid is draining is so important. I see a lot of people who go, you gotta open up your armpit first in order to clear your head and neck. 
You gotta open up your armpit, especially if you're a female wearing a bra. Bras are gonna congest a lot of lymphatic fluid in your breast tissue, and what that's gonna cause is more congestion in your armpit. 100%, I do think opening up and clearing your armpit is important, but clearing your armpit is not gonna help with your head and neck. Why? Because our head and neck are above our clavicles, above our termini. Our termini, all the vessels, are gonna drain along this outside of our neck and drain right into the subclavian veins on either the right side or the left side. So doing anything with your armpit is going to have very little, if any, effect on your head and neck. But draining your armpit is really going to help with your breast tissue or chest, your upper abdomen, so above your belly button. It's going to help with the rest of your arm and hands. So knowing what is going to drain where is so important. The next thing I'm going to say is, where do you start? So I already said we got to start at our termini. So if we start at our termini, because this is where all the fluid ends, jumping then to our feet or our fingertips, especially like this is usually when someone's using a dry brush, makes no sense. No sense. Because what happens if you have congestion? We're just gonna go with my arm, okay? Because this is easy to show. If you have congestion at your elbow, okay? And you start at your fingers and you're trying to move that fluid up past your elbow, you're hitting a roadblock here, right? All of this below is gonna be more congested because it's not draining very well. So instead of this fluid being more like water-like, where it moves more freely and fluid like it can become more like molasses especially the longer the fluid is sitting there right it's just like if fluid is sitting or like water is sitting out in a ditch the longer it sits there the thicker and grosser it gets the same thing's going to happen in our body because our cells are going to constantly be producing more waste products so starting here and trying to get this fluid that has been sitting there and a little thicker to move is a lot harder you always want to start closest to the end point Point, and then move and work your way down towards your hand. We're always moving the fluid though towards or termini. So those are a few of the things that I see and find a lot of people like mishmashing and throwing things around. And I use the armpit as an example, but the same thing can be said for like the lower body. You know, if you don't do your termini first and you jump all the way to your knee because the knee is the problem, you have a lot of space between your knee and where your lymphatic fluid is gonna drain that could be causing the congestion. More times than not, here's the crazy thing, more times than not, the area that is bothering us is not actually the problem area. It can be, but it's usually the victim, meaning it's usually the problem because something else is causing it to be a problem. So if we just jump to the area that's giving us a headache, we might actually be missing the actual problem and not resolving it. I hope that this helps in explaining how to look at different things, especially when you're being taught how to do lymphatic drainage. I want you guys to be so super successful so that when you do it, you get results because the better the results, the more likely you are to continue to do it. And long-term, your body and health are gonna thank you for it. Thanks for being here. And as always, make sure you subscribe to get notifications because I always have new information coming out on how to support your drainage pathway so that you can live the healthiest, happiest version of you. Happy draining.